Hey there, welcome to Math 7. This is unit, sorry, Math 7, Math 2. This is unit 7, worksheet number 3. We're talking today about trigonometry ratios. So today we'll be looking at things like the sine of something, so sine of something, it's gonna be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? And we have also the cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then we have the tangent of an angle being equal to, in our case here, the opposite over the adjacent, okay? And so what that means here is that when we look at a triangle, okay, with a right triangle here, the one that's across from the right 90 degree is always our hypotenuse, okay? And that's always the case there. And then let's say we call this angle the one we're talking about. We'll call that our theta there. From there, from that angle, we look and say this would be opposite, which means the one next to it is the adjacent one. Okay, if this was the angle we're talking about here, then that would become opposite, that would be adjacent. So we're going to refer to this and these um, trigonometry ratios throughout this lesson today. Okay, so here we go, looking at the odd problems here. First of all, tangent of A. So we're looking at this angle measurement here. Tangent, we said, is opposite over adjacent. And so our opposite to A is going to be over here. That's going to be 16. And the adjacent, that means the one next to it, is right here. Again, not the hypotenuse. That's our hypotenuse right there, would be 12. And so what all it's asking you to do is to write the ratio in reduced fraction form. So 16 over 12 can be reduced then. Four goes in here four times, and four goes in here three times. We would say four thirds. For the cosine of C, again, C is here. Cosine is gonna be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? And so this is our hypotenuse right here. That's our hypotenuse. Going across, that's our opposite, which makes this one the adjacent side there. All right, so our adjacent in this case is 32, and our hypotenuse is 40. And so to reduce that down, we could say eight goes in here four times and eight goes in here five times for four fifths. It's so moving on to number five. It says, find the value of each trade on ratio in decimal form and round to the nearest 10th. All right, so we wanna find the value of the sine of X, sine of X. Okay, so the sine of X, and again, we're looking for it in decimal form here. So x is right here, and so the sine, we said, is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite value is gonna be 24. The hypotenuse is the one across the 90 degree angle, so we would say that's 30. So 24 over 30, okay? I can reduce that if I wanted to real quick, right? 24 over 30, uh, six goes in here four times, and six goes in here five times. So to write that as a decimal, as a decimal, that becomes 0.8 as a decimal. So the sine of x, sine of this angle, is gonna be 0.8. And that's the idea for that one. Okay, find the missing side and round to the nearest tenth. For this one, we're gonna need to use a calculator here unless you've been asked to use a uh, trig table, which you might have been. I'm not sure what your teacher asked you to do. So we're gonna find the missing side length, which is here. So I have a, a, a side length here and I have one angle measurement. Because I have an angle measurement where I'm looking for the opposite, and I have the hypotenuse here, then I wanna think about which one I'm gonna use, right? I have so toa, right? So where do I have opposite and hypotenuse at? That's gonna be with the sine one. So I'm gonna find the sine of 50 degrees, and that's gonna equal the opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 16. From here, I'm gonna multiply both sides by 16, so I end up with 16 times the sine of 50 is gonna be equal to x. For this, I don't know what the sine of 50 is, right? But I, I could, in a sense, I could look at my calculator and I could write sine, okay, of 50 and find that the sine of 50 is 0.76 and round that up to 0.77. So I could do that. I could say 16 times uh, 0.77 right and then I can multiply that by 16 and we end up with 12.25 or round that up to 12.26 um, oh sorry one nearest tenth so if it's 25 we're gonna round that up to 12.3 okay because I had a two-fifths there and that becomes what the value of X is gonna be you could also use your calculator and do 16 sine 
50, and then that's gonna give you the same number, 12.25, which rounds us to 12.3. Number nine. Number nine, we have this length right here, okay? We have this angle, and with this angle measurement, we see we have the opposite provided to us, and we have the one next with the adjacent. We don't have a hypotenuse here. So which one works with opposite and adjacent? That's gonna be the tangent of 54 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 14, over the adjacent, which is x, okay? So in this case here, what we can do is we can basically do a little trading, right? I can multiply this side by x, this side by x, and I can also divide both sides by tangent 54. What that'll do is it'll trade the places of these two things so that x is gonna be equal to 14 over the tangent of 54, okay? So now to solve that there, okay, let's do this one here. We're gonna do 14 divided by the tangent of 54, and that gives me 10.17. And again, I wanna round that to the nearest tenth, so seven's above five, above four, we're gonna round it up to 10.2. So that's going to equal 10.2. Number 11. Looking at number 11 here. We have an angle measurement. And we can see that we have an opposite. And we have, in this case here, a hypotenuse. So that looks like a cosine. No, sorry, cosine. <laughs> a sine. Sorry about that. Sine of 64 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is x. So again, we can change those two positions and say that x is equal to 13 over the sine of 64. Put that into our calculator and we say 13 divided by the sine of 64 equals 14.46. So 46 is going to round up to 5, so 14.5 for number 11. All right, number 13, here's our angle. We can see we have the opposite here, and we have the one across from the right angle. That's gonna be the hypotenuse. So again, we have opposite and hypotenuse, which is again a sine. So the sine of 33 degrees equals our opposite x over our hypotenuse, which is 19. So now I'm gonna multiply both sides by 19 to make this go away. And so I have 19 times the sine of 33 is going to be equal to x. And so let's do that there. 19 times the sine of 33 is going to be 10.34. That's going to round down, so we just leave it at 10.3. 10.3 is equal to x right there. All right, let's look at the next one. You know, ours are very similar, same idea, just getting you practice using your Sokotoa stuff, right? So number 15, here we have an angle measurement. We don't have an opposite, but we're looking for the hypotenuse, and we have the adjacent. So that's going to be a cosine of 39 equals our adjacent, 12, over our hypotenuse, which is x. We're going to switch those around, okay? So that x equals 12 over cosine of 39. So we do that there. We do 12 divided by cosine of 39. And we find that equals to 15.4. Okay, so x equals 15.4 for number 15. Looking at number 17, we have an angle here. We have the opposite. And we have an adjacent. Opposite adjacent is going to be tangent of 36 equals our opposite over our adjacent. Again, when I add that, I'll just flip those around and make x equal to 13 over tangent of 36. Okay, so we have 13 times the tangent of 36 is gonna equal 9.4, and we'll leave it at that. Hmm, something's a little funny there. Tangent 36, 13. 13 over tangent of 36. Yeah, I got 9.4. All right, well, I'll leave it at that for now. So x equals 9.4. Uh, my answer keeps showing something a little different. Um, opposite over adjacent. Hmm, weird. Maybe just wrote it run down wrong before. All right, anyways, number 19. Here we have our angle. We have a crossover here. So we have an opposite, and we have a hypotenuse. So that's going to be a sine of 20 degrees is going to equal 
the opposite, which is x over our hypotenuse, which is 12. So we're gonna put this over here by multiplication. So 12 times the sine of 20 degrees equals x. All right, so we do 12 times the sine of 20, and we end up with 4.1 equals x approximately, 4.1, 4.1 equals x. All right, and that's that one there. Let's look at one of the word problems here. This is a ramp on the back of a moving van. A ramp on the back of a moving van is three feet high. Okay, so it's three feet high and rises at an angle of 25 degrees. Okay, so here's our ramp going up to three feet, 25 degrees there. How long is the ramp? So this is our ramp here. That's the ground down there. So I have the opposite and I have the hypotenuse. So to set this up, we're gonna again, once again, do <laughs> the sine of 25 degrees and make that equal to the opposite, which is three, over the hypotenuse, which is x. Let's change those around. To say x equals three divided by the sine of 25. And we use our calculator here, and we do three divided by the sine of 25, and that equals 7.09 which is about seven feet or so, right? So 7.09, and we would say about seven feet in terms of approximately how it's gonna be. It says rounded the nearest foot, so it's about seven feet. All right, that's it for today. Hope that helps you out a bit, and we'll see you next time.